All right, here we go. Okay, so what this is is uh, four sheets of single strength or single glass plexiglass. All right. Now, when I first bought these, I bought them at a local hardware. We still actually have a little local hardware uh, from a, from a family that started in the early late eighteen hundreds, and this is a great grandson. That's a great great grandson that's running it. So he's still there, and he hasn't been, you know going under when Home Depot and all those guys came into town. So he started out cutting these for me and they were pretty pricey. Um, this, this four sheets cost me about 30 bucks. Um, I started uh, building these uh, on a more regular basis for the workshops and also for coming in here to show you guys. And unfortunately I couldn't pay 30 bucks for each one of these so I found a plastic company in my area that sold these to me for about three bucks a sheet. So it saved me quite a bit of money. You can get plastic like this at your Home Depot or Lowe's, but sometimes they won't cut it for you, and that's going to be a problem. You, you're not going to be able to cut this stuff. If you How thick is tool. it? Um, it's about an uh, eighth of an inch thick. But you can use a plexiglass, uh, plexi, uh, plastic cutter. You could try it. No, I've done it. <laughs> okay, all right. If you can get it done, that's great. If I can do it, anybody can do it. All right, it. but cutting them square and everything uh, might be a little bit tough. What size is it? This is a 15 oh, by 15. That's going to be a good saw. Now, now, 15 by 15 is going to be good for your spring flowers. They're low to the ground. Once you get into your summer flowers, they're going to be taller, and this is not going to do you any good. So as you see on the picture up there, i got a 30-inch. So 30 inches tall, take care of all your field flowers. This so is going to take care of your spring. Those are 15 by 30? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take this plastic off here. It comes in this little plastic to protect it. Normally this comes up pretty easy, but of these strips. Pre-cut them so it'll save some time. How long? Um, just longer than the width of the plexiglass, which is 15 inches. All right, so I'm going to grab one of these strips here. Now just lay one sheet on top of the other sheet. And kind of, kind of eyeball it halfway through the sheet if you can. It doesn't come off perfectly. Perfect at all. And we just fold it over. Like that. And then we take an X Acto knife and trim off the excess. And that forms a hinge. Alright, now we need it need it on the back side because it's gonna be sticky in here. So we grab another one and then just put it on the back side. What kind of tape is that? All right, now this is called Gorilla Tape, <laughs> and it's called that because it's very strong, very sticky, and it's a thicker, heavier um, tape than your typical duct tape. Gorilla Tape. Okay, so we've got one other side. Now we put third sheet over top. Now we want to do it on the opposite side. About halfway again. I'll try to get it. Didn't you just put the three sheets together? I hope not. There you are. Three sides. Again, we want to. Now, the one side is going to be a little wider gap. Okay, so you're going to always want to fold it so that the wider gap goes on the top of the inside one. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> now, when I place this sheet of tape inside here, 
It is going to make it a little bit stiff at first when you uh, fold it over top of that other one. Try to get that down in the gap there. But this tape will stretch in time so that it will fold over with no problem. So again, we put our first one there, this one here. It actually worked out okay. You see, it'll, it'll have a tendency to kind of lift off. But once it's, it's in, the, in the position like this for a long period of time, it actually lights off. All right, so there's our three seconds. So basically, we're going to come in from here. Just make it wide enough to get your lens in here. You're going to be completely blocked. Now, it's got to have a top, because without a top, it's, it's useless. Okay. You want to duct tape tie it on here. Now we're going to trim this off before we bend it over. Side here, yeah, and just takes care of that little Going sticky stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. We taped this one time. A lady taped it with her iPod, and for some reason, to me, it seems like it takes a long time. But when she got done and she timed it, it was 12 minutes. Wow. Yeah, I did it in 12 minutes, and I thought, I thought it took like a half hour. It seemed like, but she goes, "Yeah, it was only 12 minutes." I go, oh "My God, I can't believe it." Seemed a lot longer than that. Well, if you care, that was seven minutes and four seconds. Was it? Yeah. Which was it? Seven minutes and four seconds. Okay, so, so the back side, back side flips here, and then the three flip over top of each other, and now you just carry it out like that. Now, we're not done, though, because this is sharp. And so now we have to go all the way around. Oh, yeah, just. Yeah. You've got to duct tape all the edges because you're going to get cut on this thing. So same same principle. Oh, Lexi, is that sharp, huh? Yeah. Now obviously it's not as sharp as like glass, but it, if you if you hit it right, you'll cut yourself on it. How long does it last before it scratches too bad? Um, depends on how you treat it. Um, the scratches won't affect the images though, because yeah. when you're shooting flower shots, you're usually shooting pretty wide open, mm -hmm. and you're blurring out the backgrounds. So what happens is the scratches are totally blurred out. The depth of field is just too shallow to bring the scratches in, so it's, it doesn't cause any real problems with that. Um, have you ever used frosted plexi no. to, um, to like a diffuser and windbreak at the same time? Uh, no. Um, one nice thing about this is that you can put your diffuser over top of it and lay it on the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to hold it, you just literally just lay it on the top of the... Uh, of the um, <coughs> glass and, and uh, takes care of that. Now, one thing you got to be careful of, and I've done this twice, and I've had a real bear of a time getting this tape off. You don't want to tape this with this thing down. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it twice, so I always make sure I think. Because I've done it two times, and this tape, being as sticky as it is, I had one heck of a time trying to get that, that tape off there. To, Did this yet, Mike? Um, <laughs> a friend of mine has um, ties in China with yeah. manufacturing, and he told me he says, "Oh, I could get that thing built, no problem." But the um, the cost of the uh, tooling and setup to do it, yeah. it, you couldn't sell enough of them to even get your money back. Yeah. Uh, and then the cost of marketing it to, yeah. to market it, you'd have to have a huge amount of money. Yeah. And and how many are you realistically going to sell? Gonna sell? Yeah. So. This is, uh, especially when, if it's too simple and obvious, you can't patent it, or you it, can't force them to patent it. And then you'd get people that would say, oh, I can build it myself, but I'm really yeah. yeah. Especially after they see the video. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have, 
I just had another guy the other day, he says, when are you going to video that thing? <laughs> Yeah, YouTube. How many gets? Yeah. <laughs> you put it up on your website. It's, it's good marketing for you. Yeah. yeah. I suppose if I wanted to go through the hassle, I could make them and sell them. But you know, at at the cost of what it costs, you know, right. um, in the time, I don't know. It just doesn't sound very interesting. You'd rather be taking pictures. Exactly. I hear kids to do it. Yeah. Some kids in China. <laughs> so how many pieces of tape do you use? 16 of them. Four pieces, four sides, four edges for four, for four pieces. Mm -hmm. So this did help solve the problem as far as wind when I was doing my workshops, but like I said, we weren't necessarily shooting flowers all day for eight hours. Right. So a lot of the other subjects that we wanted to shoot it, it didn't do us any good, so um, it, it was it was a neat idea and it worked okay for a little bit, but um, but eventually I just gave up on these field workshops. All right, eleven minutes and twenty seconds. Huh? Eleven minutes and twenty seconds. Oh my God, I'm faster than last time. Well, you should be getting faster, even with the talking and everything. Okay, so. So again, we, we go ahead and set it up. Now, there are, there's the only drawbacks, um, depending on the light and the sun and all that, you could get some glare off this glass in the back. So that's where you get your diffuser. Diffuser just lays right up here and it diffuses it, right? Um, you will also have a problem with the winds at your back. It's going to go in there and move your flower. It's, you know, you can't stop it if it's at your back. So you want to position this thing, hopefully, from a side wind or a back. Uh, coming from the backside, and then it's going to work fantastic for that. But anything from behind is going to it's going to creep in there, and it's going to move that flower. Um, so diffuse it uh, if if you're getting some glare back there, and also early morning if you're out shooting and it's dewy and it's it's humid, this will fog up. So I carry paper towels with me, and I have to clean it off every time we go to shoot. To it's getting big now. Now some people claim that there's this no, anti fog. Now, the ammonia will set, will, um, yeah, it'll fog it yeah, okay. permanently. Yeah. Um, the, the ammonia. There, someone said that there's stuff you can spray on things to keep it from fogging. I don't know. I, I've never. There's plastic, like glass cleaner that you can use, glass plastic cleaner. Yeah, so I, I don't know. There, if you can find something that'll keep it from fogging, that would help. I, I just carry a whole lot of paper towels and I just paper towel it off. But dewy mornings it will get foggy on you and depending on the humidity and the sun and all that kind of stuff. Do you ever use a, a fake backdrop on the back sheet? Yeah, you can do that. Um, you can go ahead and just put it on the back of this thing and lean it up against if you want. Yeah, that way you don't have to worry about yep. the reflection off the back. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a great little tool. Again, once you leave it in this position for a while, it'll flatten out real nice. And uh, Now, it will warp a little bit, you know, like in the heat. If yeah. you got it in a hot area, you'll see this stuff warp. Uh, but then once you get in a more stable condition, it actually flattens back out. I've had them warp, and then they go right back to flat again once you put them in a normal condition. But they will kind of uh, warp up a little bit. Bigger ones will warp more, of course. Smaller ones, not so. All right, so that is the wind box. Pretty cool, eh? We'll, we'll auction this off. Can you use this uh, in informal gardens?